Rejoice! God has promised to heal our land. For many years, Christians have been praying 2 Chronicles 7.14. If my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. This ends with a promise of God to heal the land. The time has come for healing. In the natural, the United States looks very ill. It's practically on its deathbed. The government appears to have been taken by radical secularists who mock and wish to silence believers. But rejoice! This is not the only perspective of what is happening today. In truth, it is the godless secularists who are terrified. The 2020 election theft was a frightened reaction to an awakening church. Let me explain God's plan for healing our land. When you get a cold or COVID-19, your first thought is a desire for healing. The last thing you want from your body's immune system is surrender to the virus. The United States is experiencing a profound illness in the form of bitter political and philosophical division. Traditional values of freedom of speech and religion are under attack. Efforts are increasing to silence debate. Free enterprise and entrepreneurship are under attack. Small businesses are closing at a rapid pace. The faith of the American people in the integrity of their votes is at an all-time low. Fear and anger are rising. We are sick. The left says, We won! Accept it! It's time for the right to surrender so the nation can be healed. It's time to accept larger government, higher taxes, greater regulation, and stricter control over speech and gun ownership. It is time to quit complaining about abortion and sexual freedom. It's time to heal by succumbing to the will of the declared winners. This is not healing. It is the transformation of the United States into a different nation, one conceived in demands of conformity to the will of a secular elite. It's a nation where honest debate and even truth are to be silenced. In this new America, citizens are to constantly be thinking, how can I keep from offending those in power and continue to have access to the food and shelter I need to survive? This is not America. It's the death of America. It's the reason people want to leave, not come. It's what many people left other countries and came to America to escape. It is not healing. For a body to heal from illness, its immune system must recognize and combat those things that seek to sap the strength of the body to feed themselves. Nutrients build the body up. They assimilate and become part of a healthy body. Pathogens seek their own survival at the cost of the body. Pathogens kill. A healthy United States is one where individuals largely govern themselves because they love God and want His will for their lives. God's will includes the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. This leads to prosperity and generosity. It leads to faithful marriages, strong families, and wonderful safe communities with very little need for government at the local, state, or even national level. A pathogen opposes this very thing while feeding on what's left of America's strength. Greater and greater burdens are placed on the good and prosperous 
to feed an ever-expanding federal government, a government that attacks those who still call for God's will and traditional family structure. Those who try to excuse this kind of discrimination in the name of culture, I say prejudice is prejudice and humanity is humanity. It is a crime. And using religion or culture as a license to discriminate, demonizing the community, individuals to score political points, is no more justifiable around the world than it is here at home, and our policy should reflect that. Even things as basic as the identification of male and female. When you get sick, you look for medications and treatments that can help your body heal. The medication America needs is truth. Truth stands firm on the importance of seeking God's will for your life. It stands firm on the importance of marriage and the traditional family. It stands firm for freedom of speech and religion. It stands firm for free enterprise, not as a matter of opinion, but as a matter of absolute truth. History records the impact of socialism and censorship. The death and misery index of immorality is provable. Joe Biden may not have gotten more legal votes than Donald Trump, but he clearly got a huge number. There are large numbers of people who want a socialist America. There are large numbers of people who want those who oppose sexual immorality silenced. The healing of America will require a great awakening. It's underway. It is happening. It is far from finished, but it's clearly started. The sexual revolutionary philosophy of Playboy's Hugh Hefner has had its day. That revolution is history. It's no longer a dream of sexual freedom. It's an aging revolution with obvious, horrific results. When communism is first advocated and promoted, it cries out for a crushing of capitalism resulting in a people's utopia. As capitalism gets crushed and the years go by, communist revolutions turn out to be dystopian tyrannies. As the years go by on the sexual revolution, we see the price being the demise of marriage and family. We see fatherless children, disease and early death. We see pornography addictions and a growing sex slave industry. These are not opinions, it's measurable truth. The revolutionaries have now taken Congress and the presidency. The next phase of their revolution is the silencing of critics. But it will not succeed. You can attempt to silence truth, and you can raise an army of lie spreaders, but truth cannot be defeated because it remains true. An awakening is a revelation of truth. It's a great spreading of truth. It's people delighted by its revelation. Truth is the medicine America needs to experience healing from the many illnesses of the sexual revolution. Health restored is to return to God's will. We are at a great crossroads that Germany experienced February 29, 1933. The similarities are remarkable. The capital of the German government was destroyed by fire. Germans were incensed. Hitler managed to blame the fire on his political opponents, the communists. Prior to the fire, many Germans had a low opinion of Hitler and his thugs. After the fire, they saw a need for thugs to crush the villains who would do such a thing. Newspapers friendly to Hitler claimed the fire was a message to communist radicals to rise up and revolt. 
the communists were accused of preparing to do horrible things to citizens across Germany. Within 24 hours of the fire, Hitler suspended freedom of press and public assembly. There were those who doubted the official story, blaming the communists, and they quickly came under surveillance. Thousands were arrested. Many were killed. They were excluded from Germany's parliament, and on March 23rd, the parliament, in effect, declared Hitler the dictator of Germany. Twelve years and millions of lives later, at the Nuremberg trials following World War II, the truth came out. Hans Gesevius, a witness who formerly held a high position in the Berlin Police Administration, tells of his investigation of the Reichstag fire. Um es kurz zu sagen, zunächst den Tatbestand zu geben, haben wir festgestellt. To speak briefly and to state the facts. First of all, we ascertained that quite generally, Hitler had stated the wish for a large-scale propaganda campaign. Goebbels took on the job of making the necessary proposals, and it was Goebbels who first thought of setting the Reichstag on fire. A group of ten reliable SA men was made ready, and now Goering was informed about every detail of the plan. It was expected from Goering, and he gave his assurances that he would do so, that the police would be instructed, while still suffering from shock, to take up a false trail. On January 6, 2021, the Capitol building of the United States erupted in violence just as the world was about to hear congressional testimony on election fraud conducted by those seeking to elect Joe Biden president. The hearing was halted, and the world horrified by a violent clash blamed on the radical supporters of President Donald Trump. Media, favorable to Joe Biden, portrayed the event as an act of insurrection incited by Donald Trump in a desperate effort to maintain power. Donald Trump was banned from communicating using Twitter and Facebook. Parler, an alternative to Twitter, was shut down. God laughs and says, Do not buy the lies that will destroy America. You won't have to wait 12 years to learn why people who look like Trump supporters would shut down Congress while they're trying to investigate voter fraud. You don't have to wait 12 years to find out who arranged for four states to stop counting votes with Trump far ahead. You don't have to wait 12 years to find out who released the coronavirus and why. You don't have to wait 12 years to learn who told New York City hospitals to run up a frightening death toll. Literally, like, black lives don't matter here. And I mean, that's pretty sad that somebody who is white and lives hundreds of miles away from the city gives more of it about these people than the actual people in this city. These people aren't dying from COVID. Let me give you several examples here. An anesthesiologist um, intubated the patients and for about five hours, like we were waiting on a chest x-ray to confirm that the placement was wrong. And in the meantime, while we're waiting for that, and we've told the anesthesiologist that it was placed wrong because like literally only one side of the chest is like inflating, um, he dies. Okay. Um, a patient had a heart rate of 40. I was literally ran out of like the patient's room to get like the director of nursing who was standing out there and I'm like, can you stop him? He's going to kill that patient. He's going to kill that patient if he defibrillates him with bradycardia and a heart rate of 40. And the director of nursing just shook his head and I turned around and he killed the dude. It's like going in the twilight zone. Like everyone here is okay with this. Look, the only way I can kind of put this into context for everybody is, and this is going to be kind of an extreme example, this is like really the only thing I can come up with. 
It's like if we were in Nazi Germany and they were like taking the Jews to go put them in a gas chamber, I'm the one like there saying, hey, this is not good. This is bad. This is wrong. We should not be doing this. And then everyone tells me, hang in there. You're doing a great job. You can't save everybody. They're murdering these people. Adolf Hitler's rise to power was made possible by lies and the brutal silencing of truth. That will not work in America. In fact, the truth will bring a healing of monumental proportions. It will expose the liars and their lies. It will expose the media. It will expose the social media companies. It will expose Democrats and Republicans who have joined in an effort to spread lies and stop an awakening. Jesus Christ once said, You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The ultimate truth is Jesus Christ himself. But the truth, even in the presentation of news, is key to experiencing freedom. It was lies accepted that brought Hitler to power and took away freedom. The truth is coming, and it will be like a cure for the ills of America. This is not just a political battle. It's a cultural battle. It's a spiritual battle. It's a battle for the soul of America, and God will win. He has promised those who have sought him. He will heal their land. America's Nuremberg trials are coming, and it won't take 12 years. Those who have sought to govern America using sex and blackmail will be tried and punished. Those who have sought to turn America's schools into secular indoctrination centers will be exposed and rejected. Those who have pretended to be religious leaders while molesting children will be removed from positions of influence. Those who have cried out for America to be liberated from morality will be seen as architects of American suffering. God has promised. I will heal your land.